Good morning everybody and uh, welcome along to another video. Um, Cal on DX Commander, he did a video the other night where he was talking about using his uh, digital mixing desk and uh, he kind of touched on using uh, a DI box at one point in the video so I just said I'd, uh, I'd do kind of a, a little bit of a video on the one I use and uh, show show them what it's all about so uh, there you go so just bear with me and i'll get it and uh, we'll have a run through the features and uh, what it does so um this is the di box i use which is a uh, behringer as well it's the uh, gi 100 it's an active di box it has features that we don't really use excuse the barking dogs no oh, that's the barking dogs taken care of um, I've been using this for a few years now at this stage and uh, these aren't very expensive um, you'll see people telling you uh, you can use oh, DI boxes that cost you know maybe three or four times what this one cost but for what we're doing in amateur radio not necessary um, on some of the forums there the likes of gear sluts and what not, uh, Behringer stuff gets it gets a bit of a it gets a bit of a hard time but for again what we're doing in amateur radio it's uh, perfectly adequate so how do I use this basically you uh, on one end you have uh, your input what these are designed for in essence is if you have uh, an unbalanced signal coming from the likes of a keyboard, a bass, a guitar, etc, etc and um, you want to input that signal to the, um, in, say in Cal's case, his, uh, his, digital, uh, his digital board there that he uses, um, you can use one of these. Um, Rather than micing up, say, the lead guitarists or the bassists um, amplifier, which, you know, it's been done for years. It's quite an acceptable practice, but the only drawback to it is that uh, the mic tends to pick up any other noise that's in the vicinity of the amplifier. So um, you can use one of these. And basically what goes on here is you present your unbalanced signal here and what it does there are two transformers in this this one contains the Behringer OT1 transformer uh, which is kind of their signature piece it's featured in a lot of their gears uh, gear sorry it's quite a good transformer uh, it also has an unbal in it um, where it transforms the signal from unbalanced going on the input to fully balanced on the output so you can uh, just head off with an XLR into your mixing desk there your console or front of house sound or whatever you want to do and you can pick up your uh, your your guitar or your bass or whatever so how does this lend itself to amateur radio um, basically the way these things are configured inside it provides, in the case of this one, uh, not the one that Cal has, uh, I can't remember, I think it's a DI-100, I'm not sure the one he showed, but um, it doesn't have the OT-1 in it. Um, so this one provides full galvanic isolation on the input and the output, so um, it's, it's, you know, same principle as a transformer, it's connected but not physically, it's, it's done, you know, um, it's done through transformers. So um this lives uh this is the last piece of equipment that my audio signal goes through before it gets to the radio so that's to isolate every piece of equipment i have um away from the radio just on the off chance if there's any rf getting into any of the cables anywhere um you know this will will uh, eliminate that so um, you can see there you have the pad on this one as well you have two 20 db pads and uh, you can engage just 20 if you want to or you can hit the two together and have 40 db of pad uh, to attenuate the signal and um, this direct link this is for if you're using it with a guitar amplifier you can uh, direct link through the the head of the amplifier 
so you're um, you're just kind of inserting this in the signal path so that's what that's for uh, on this end then we have the uh, output uh, you have a ground lift switch which is very handy if you're getting any home ranting like that generally by uh, depressing or, or releasing the ground lift it will take care of that this here we don't need to worry about this is a simulator uh, simulator for a 4x12 inch cabinet that will kind of present that kind of effect to the uh, to the mixing desk um, if you're if you're going down that route but um, we're, we're not interested in that so now there is a certain procedure to be followed um, in wiring this up uh, as to how you um, how you uh, present your cabling to it so the input here this has to be unbalanced so if you're coming cal from your rack or your your digital mixing desk or whatever um, it's always kind of a good practice to keep your entire system balanced as far as you can um, which is good for RFI and, and stuff like that so but once you get this far here um, you need to tie your audio minus and your uh, ground or your braid together and the plug here and use a mono jack going in here uh, so you come out here then balanced into your XLR and now this is where it kind of gets a little interesting because this has an unbal in, in it um, where it's converting unbalanced to balanced we need to undo that um, so we go with our XLR here which is fully balanced and when this lead runs along and, and goes to your mic input or your uh, accessory input or, or whatever input you're using on, on the front or back of your radio you need to unbalance it again by tying the audio minus and the braid or shield or whatever you want to call it together um, because there are very very few radios that will take a uh, balanced input as far as I know I think some of the the bigger Yezus um, the DX5000 and the 9000 I think they have an XLR on the back but I'm pretty sure even at that it's not fully balanced because radio manufacturers tend to unbalance uh, unbalance the the modulator and um, the modulators that they all used are are balanced but the way they they use them they unbalance them so uh, I highly doubt that even the radios that have the uh, XLRs on the back um, I, I would still uh, hazard a guess that the input there is unbalanced So, but that's the important bit um, you're presenting an unbalanced connection here it comes out this side balanced but you must unbalance it again before you connect it to the radio or it won't work properly and um, I've never had any issues here um, with with RFI and the audio and I've, I've quite a lot of stuff here in the audio chain as most of you know uh, and I suppose just another point on this as well no matter what impedance you present on the input here um, it will come out this side at 600 ohms no matter what you, you could be putting 18 kilo ohms of impedance in here and it will come out this side at 600 ohms regardless which is uh, you know kind of what we want to be presenting to our radios anyway so it can kind of uh, you know if you have any mismatch between your microphone and your radio this thing will uh, will put that to bed uh, they are normally battery powered uh, or they can be ran uh, via phantom power um, I have a few items of equipment in the shack here that run at um, uh, run at 9 volts so I have a, a dedicated supply for 9 volt stuff so um, I just have it running off a cable because the way this is designed that um, once you plug a jack in there and you have a battery in it uh, it's active uh, because it's an active, uh, an active circuit so that means it's drawn from the battery uh, once you have something plugged in here and if you go off and leave it plugged in it's uh, it's draining the battery so there you go anyway and um, I suppose that brings me on to another little uh, subject that I want to talk about hang on yeah I'd, um, talk about cable um, this is the cable that I use um, Van Dam 
tour grade classic uh, mini star quad um, this is kind of what's recommended to use on all the well the uh, the main ESSB site uh, belonging to John N9UN I think it is quite a, a good site there uh, he spent quite a lot of time putting that together and um, if you read the TX set up there on, on that site it'll tell you all the information you need to know I'll put a link to that below and I'll also put a link to uh, a document from, from the RAIN Corporation which are a very well known institution in the audio world and it's them that explains about um, unbalancing the cables and always unbalance it at the end where you need it unbalanced so in the case of the DI box it's it's coming out balanced here but we want it unbalanced at the radio end so we will unbalance it here rather than doing it this side y you could do it this side by tying pin one and uh, pin three together if you wanted to but um, there it's good engineering practice to uh, to do it at the end of the cable where you need it um, so why star quad uh, and you can see this one is uh, actually one that has been unbalanced here you can see the audio minus um, and the and the braid are tied together uh, this is a uh, four conductor cable um, so I use uh, white for the audio plus blue for the audio minus and then you have the uh, the ground um, and not only do you have the four conductors but th th these are twisted as well uh, this stuff is designed um, by uh, Starquad to be used in uh, very long runs uh, from from uh, at concerts and stuff from from the the PA on the stage to the front of house sound. Uh, so the cables uh, the the run runs of cable tend to be very very long. They could be uh, 150 200 meter run of cable. Um, quite prone to uh, over that length to pick up uh, any interference or home or RFI. So this stuff is designed. To, to be used in an RFI environment so uh, as far as I'm concerned this is the only cable that, that uh, anybody should use it's uh, it's not expensive like you know um, you know like uh, the thing that always makes me laugh is you see people buying these real expensive microphones and uh, you know all this carry on and then they get to the cable and they buy the cheapest shit they can get their hands on which is uh, a bit of a false economy uh, this stuff is about one pound uh, 20 a meter or so um, on eBay there's quite a number of guys selling it but make sure that that is the cable that you that, that you use so um, that's just my two cents on on the DI box and how it works uh, I've uh, been waffling long enough I'm gone over time on this but uh, on this uh, video here so um, that's uh, my DI box Cal and um, that's why I use it so um, I do know somebody that got that one that you had before um, uh, that, that same one I forget the model number of it but uh, they didn't have great success with it but uh, I don't know you can try it and see so there you go uh, 73 Cal and uh, keep the videos coming uh, highly entertaining stuff at times and uh, the uh, Antenna stuff is uh, always interesting, of course. So, 7-3 uh, and we get you again. And happy Easter. This is George GI7 Kilo Oscar. Bye-bye.